And that's everything. Let's get started. Child's pose. Toes together, knees open. Stretch forward. And bring yourself to a resting place down on your mat. Take a deep, deep breath in. And exhale through your mouth. Let your hips get heavy. Allow your ankles to soften out. Your forehead to rest on the ground. And start to create a slow, steady, deep, rhythmic breath. Get very purposeful with your breathing. Use your breath as the tool that carries you through the whole class. With your next inhale, bring yourself up into Downward Facing Dog. And when you arrive in Downward Facing Dog, begin exploring. Bend one knee, straighten the other knee. Wave your hips from side to side. Shake your head out. Turn on your listening, a listening to your body for what it's telling you about where your body is feeling like it could use more space and where it could use more strength. Listen for where your body would like a softening and a letting go. Get connected to what's actually happening. Raise your right leg into the air behind you. Stretch it up and back. Then bend your knee. Bring your heel to your hip. Turn your hips open. Push down with your hand and reach up with your knee so that your whole side body stretches. Return your foot to the floor. Now the left side, raise your left leg up into the air, bend your knee heel to your hip, and turn your hips open to the left side of the room. As you stretch, make your waist as long as you possibly can. Then return your foot to the floor. <clears throat> Walk up to your hands, open your feet parallel and hip width distance. Lift up halfway to stretch your body long out of your hips. Then as you exhale, just hang down. Piece by piece, we'll move through your body so that you can get intentional about the way you've chosen to hold yourself and fortify your body, where you've chosen to let go. So right now, choose feet that are parallel to one another. Choose that the back of your knees are soft, but that your legs are really strong. Choose to be purposeful about your breathing. Soften the back of your knees so that you have to use the strength in your legs. When your knees are locked, you don't have to use the strength in your legs. So soften the backs of your knees and then just shift your hips forward. There you go. All of a sudden, your legs will kick into a kind of work that they may have never known before. You can fold your arms and hold the opposite of elbow if you'd like. You can sway from side to side. Shift your weight forward right there. Strong legs, but then down through your spine, a softness. Focus the intensity of the stretch into the backs of your thighs. Let your neck soften. Let it get longer. Let your head be heavy. Okay, fingers to the ground, walk your feet together, come all the way up to standing. Stretch your arms overhead, fingertips to the ceiling, eyes to the ceiling, reach up and then reach back an extra inch, just a little further, then hands to prayer position and pause. Eyes open, just focus on one point in the front of the room and set an intention for the rest of the practice. Soften your knees. Three times chant OM together. Take a deep breath in. Um, um, Reach up to the ceiling and breathe in. Fold down to the floor as you breathe out. Halfway lift, breathe in. High plank to low plank as you breathe out. Look forward and stretch your body long. Upward facing dog. Make strong legs. Downward facing dog. 
Take one deep breath in, a long exhale, completely empty. Then look to your hands, move up to your hands, feet together, halfway lift, fold down. Stand, unlock your knees and stand up through the strength of your legs, reach up and back, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, inhale, high plank to low plank as you exhale. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. One full breath in, press your thigh bones back, look to your hands, move up to the front of your mat, feet together. Halfway lift and fold down. Inhale and stand, reach up out of your feet and back. Now fold to the floor as you exhale. Halfway lift, breathe in. High plank to low plank, breathe out. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. One deep breath in. Long, empty exhale. Look to your hands, move forward. Halfway lift and fold down. Chair pose, sit back just for one breath, reach up and fold to the floor. Halfway lift. High plank to low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward and lunge. Two feet firmly planted, reach up. Warrior one, hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Left side, step. Back foot flat, reach up and back, deep lunge. Hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Three breaths now. As you move through the sun salutations, they're a warm up of sorts on many different levels, but right now use them for a warm up of your listening. Move through listening to your breath. Move through listening to how your movements match your breath. Move through listening to how your body's experiencing the movements. Look to your hands, move up to your hands. Halfway lift, fold down. Chair pose, sit back, reach your arms up, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right side, warrior one. Big lunge, reach up and back, hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, now the left side step. Be patient, reach up and back, hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Stay right on the beat of the breath. Now your breath in particular, but gradually our breath will melt together and become one group breath. Being a beat above, being a beat behind is off beat. That's an interesting thing to learn to life. Being a little too early, a little too late is never on time. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, empty your breath. Look to your hands, move up to your hands. Halfway lift, stretch really long. Now fold down. Sit back, chair pose. Reach up and fill your lungs. Now fold down. Halfway lift, low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward. Warrior one, reach up. Hands down, chaturanga. Be purposeful with your fingers, your toes. Upward dog, downward dog. Step your left foot forward. It's an exercise in waking up every inch of your body. Hands down, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. You have three breaths. As you move through the sun salutations, imagine yourself waking up and spreading out into the outer inches of your skin. One more breath in. Exhale, empty. Look to your hands. Move up to your hands. Halfway lift. Fold down. Sit back, chair pose. Reach up all the way past your fingertips and then fold down. Halfway lift. High plank to low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, step your right foot forward and lunge. Inhale, up and back. Hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Now your left foot, step it forward and lunge. Reach up and back. 
hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, you have three breaths. Use your breath to clean the slate, to let go of where you've been, and prepare yourself to be right here. One more breath in. Exhale, empty your breath. Look to your hands, move up to your hands. Halfway lift, fold down. Chair pose, sit back, reach your arms up, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, high plank to low plank. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. When you inhale, raise your right leg into the air. Bend your knee, heel to your hip, open your hips, exhale. Now place your left hand deeply into your mat, hug your left shoulder deep into your back, and flip over so that you land still and soundless foot on the floor. Reach up to the ceiling and overhead. Breathe here, two powerful feet on the floor. Lift yourself up out of your left shoulder. Can you do that? Up out of your left shoulder, light. Now gracefully float to side plank. Put your right hand on the ground. Face the left side of the room. Stack your feet one on top of the other. So your body is a plank, just tilted to your side. Look up to your top fingertips and stretch up to your fingertips at the ceiling. Three more breaths here. Keep your bottom shoulder hugging into your body. Reach up gracefully, hands to the floor, low plank. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Raise your right leg into the air. Stretch it up and back. As you exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Hover your armpits over your wrists and step forward to crescent lunge. Stay on the ball of your back foot, arms into the air. Square your hips to the front of the room and activate your back leg. You make your back leg what drives and guides the pose. How powerful and strong it is, is how much capacity you have to take this back bend. So you'll need square hips. As I look around, I can see some of you fortify your strength by rolling your thighs out a little bit. Turn them in so your thigh bones suck back into your pelvis. It might seem counterintuitive at first, but try it that way, then lunge down. Make your back leg strong. Now reach up out of your legs. You've got it. Nice, Marcy. The deeper back you want to go, the stronger, stronger you'll make your back leg. A little tiny bit more in these thigh bones. Now lunge. Last breath. Reach up and back. Then hands to prayer position. Pause. Twist toward Africa. Left elbow, right knee. Anchor your elbow outside of your leg as far as you can. Try to work your way up toward your armpit, then open your arms. Bottom arm down, top arm up. Stay in your breathing. Make the pose light. Lift up just a little bit more than you think you should. Wrap your top arm behind your back. Maybe reach underneath of your front leg to fully bind. It's your choice to be in this half binder. Add the bottom arm for a full bind. Now three more breaths. Make your back leg strong. Every time you inhale, lift your chest up off of your thigh. When you exhale, soften your back and turn to the ceiling. You have two more. Straighten your back leg. Get really light. Last breath. Stay for the whole exhale. Inhale, spin around to warrior two. Land as you exhale. Open your feet long apart and lunge down deeply. With your back foot, Line it up so it's parallel to the back edge of your mat. That's it. Bend your knee a lot. Hips, ribs, and shoulders face this side of the room. Go down as low as you can go in your legs and stay down there. Then use your abdominal muscles, pulling and lifting, to create a sensation of pulling you up, pulling your guts up out of the bowl of your pelvis. <clears throat> Your knee may not point straight to the front of the room. It may point a little bit to the side of the room. That works fine. Lunge down. Now extended side angle. It's merely just a tilt of your torso. Put your right fingertips on the ground at the arch of your right foot. You could use a block as well. Keep rolling your top hip open, turning your chest to the ceiling. 
Take three more breaths here. Activate your left arm, whether you reach to the ceiling or reach over to the front of the room, either way works. Last breath, bend your front knee a lot, chest up to the ceiling, then high plank to low plank, lots of control, step back. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Take a deep breath in and exhale through your mouth. Raise your left leg into the air and bend your knee, bring your heel to your hip. Turn your hips open to the left side of the room. Push down with your hands, pull up and back with your knees so you create from your fingertips to your knees a sense of pulling apart. Slow motion, flip over. Watch your foot hover above the floor as then you choose to place it on the ground. Fingers to the ceiling, then overhead. Tuck your bottom shoulder. There. Deep underneath of your back. One more breath. Float to side plank. Left hand to the ground. Face the right side of the room. Right arm in the air. Stack your hips one on top of each other. Oftentimes, people's hips are turning open to the ceiling. Bring your top hip forward so it stacks on top of your bottom hip. Push down with your left hand and rise up deep in your left armpit so that you're floating, hovering. What could you do to make this pose feel lighter? For two more breaths, make it lighter. Not tolerating the pose, hoping to get to the end of two breaths, but really, truly lighter. For two more breaths, then float high plank. Put your hand on the ground, strong ribs. There you go, low plank. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Raise your left leg into the air. As you exhale, bring your knee into your nose. Get round like a Halloween cat and step forward. Crescent lunge, reach up. Square hips, thigh bones that are sucking back into your pelvis, arms into the air. You'll need to lunge down. You'll have to take a risk of a pose that's too much, too much challenge for your thigh muscles. It'll take lunging down deep and pushing your heel back to have access to a back bend. Then reach up out of your hips. That's it, Marcy. Up and back. Good. You've got it. Can you bend your leg a little more, Jane, and then stretch for the wall behind you? Two more breaths. You've got it. Hands to prayer position and pause. Twist toward the left, right elbow, left knee. Active back leg, keep it really active. Keep your hips light. Open your arms. Bring breath, bring breath to keep flushing through your body, flushing out the areas that are tight and sticky and giving you space to twist. Take three more breaths here. Lift your chest off of your thighs. Turn to the ceiling. Two more breaths. A bound arm, a double bind. Okay, last breath, chest up. Turn to the ceiling as you exhale, then spin around when you breathe in. Warrior two. Big lunge, lunge down. The challenge in a warrior two is we put our first instinct on pointing our knee to the front of the room, and then our back hip can't do the pose. Hips, ribs, shoulders face the side of the room, and then you accommodate with your legs. Likely your front leg needs to point a little bit more at an angle, so you can lunge down. And then if you feel like your tush is popping out behind you, pull your belly up as strong as you can so that your tailbone can descend between your, your hips. Long stance. The longer your legs, the longer your stance. Give yourself a little more space under here. Come way back there. Extended side angle, fingertips to the floor. Can you keep your lunge really deep? It's tempting to let your back hip come out of the lunge. Then left arm up to the ceiling. Good. Keep turning this over. Tuck your left hip under you as you turn your chest to the ceiling. Fingertips. Make them barely touch the floor. Lighten the load of your bottom fingertips. Belly in. Now hands to the floor, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in and exhale through your mouth. Just a total clearing out, just empty. Empty your breath, use your breath like a wind to just move through you. One more. 
Now look to your hands and move up to your hands with your feet together. Halfway lift and fold down. Chair pose comes next. Squat back and reach your arms up. Sit way back like you're reaching for a chair and you're just about to discover it's not quite there. Hands to prayer, twist toward Africa. Check out your right knee. That one tends not to bend as much as the left. Keep them equally bending. Then open your arms, bottom arm down, top arm up. Stay with your breathing, stay with your breathing. You can wrap your top arm behind your back. You can reach through your knees and hold hands with your top arm outside of your left hip. You can stand up on your right leg for bird of paradise or stay in the bound squat. Three more breaths. If you're staying in the bound squat, keep stretching your tush back and lifting your chest up. So opposition. One more breath. Birds, lift your chest and lift your gaze. Get light. And then step down. Everyone unwind. Hands to the floor, hips high in the air. Open your feet, hip width distance. Open them up. Hook your big toes and stretch your chest down to your toes. Bring action into your legs. So you will want to put pressure in the ball of your big toe and take the weight out of the back edge of your knee. Make your legs strong, muscles squeezing to your bones. Be fully in listening to how strong your legs are and match that strength with an opposite, with ease in your spine. Check out your neck and your shoulders. Listen for how much ease is there and could there, is there space for more ease. A lot of times when you get to really the stages of the years of practice of yoga, it's when you're no longer looking for where to put effort, but now you're carving away effort and bringing in ease. That really takes careful listening. Release your toes, put your fingertips on the ground underneath of your shoulders, raise your right leg up to the side of the room. Your right foot needs to stay in line with your left foot and just reach straight to the side of the room, not behind you. Right leg to the right side of the room not behind you. Straight over to the side like you're going to sit your foot on the person beside you, their hip or their back. If it's easy, then your foot's behind you. If it feels almost impossible, your foot is right where it needs to be. Let's take three more breaths. You've got it. Leg up a little higher now. Flex your foot. Last breath. Lift it high. Okay, foot on the floor. Shake your hips out. Other leg. Lift your left leg up to the side. On your standing leg, keep the back of your knee soft. Keep pushing the four corners of your feet into the ground. You might be able to bring ease into your standing foot's toes. Forward a little more, Marcy. Okay, lift it a lot higher, a lot higher, and then back to the ground. Shake it out. It's not that bad. <sighs> Squat down and reach your arms up into the air. Chair pose. Hands to prayer position. Twist toward the left. Anchor your elbow between your knees or outside of your knee. Ensure both knees are equally bending, then open your arms. Reach down, reach up. You can wrap your top arm around behind your back. Your bottom arm can stay reaching for the floor or between your knees and reach around your right hip and hold hands. The bind is outside of your right hip instead of between the cheeks. If they just don't quite reach together, a hand towel or a strap will cover the distance. A bind is an amazing thing for your shoulders. Once your hands are bound, lift your chest up and turn. Squat way down. Two more breaths. Extend your reaching leg, birds. Lift your chest and your gaze, and then gently bring yourselves down, unwind. Open your feet, stand on your hands, palms underneath of your feet. Give yourself a little bit of love right now. Wiggle your toes, massage your wrists, massage the palms of your hands. <clears throat> A little bit of love. Look for how you would feel taken care of right now by yourself.
Release your feet. Put your left fingertips on the ground underneath of your left shoulder. Use your right hand, middle and index finger to hold your right foot's big toe. And lift your right foot up to the side. Hold your toe. Ready, set. Okay, there's a sense of wanting to believe you don't know what to do right now. Go, lift your foot up. Once everybody's foot is up, I'll start to count. <sighs> on your mark, get set. Jamie, put your hand on a block if that's too many stretching things at once. Okay, three more breaths. Just be glad you're not a biker right now. Yeah, I know, biker. <laughs> foot on the floor, shake your hips out. It's not very good for the bikers. <laughs> Left side. Hook your big toe. Lift your left leg up. Yes, lift it up. All right. I think Marcy needs a little adjustment on that assist there. It looks like it's throwing her off. How are you doing? Good? Ready? Lift your foot up even higher. This one's the easy one. You're holding on. Okay, foot on the floor. Shake your hips out. Why don't we do this? Toe heel your feet as wide as you can. Maybe you'll need your toes pointing out at an angle. Squat down to a goddess squat. That means tush down around your heels. Knees wide. Put your elbows between your knees and press out. Your hands can come to prayer position. You might like swaying a little bit from foot to foot. This is a great pose to really listen into your body and what's actually happening. Your body will tell you what is actually happening. It's a great link to the present, bringing sensation into your body. Might feel good to have a little twist right now. Reach your right arm down to the right corner of the room inside of your front knee, left arm up to the ceiling. Reach your left arm around behind your back to halfway bind the pose. Some of you might feel complete at this point of the pose. Otherwise, last stage, keep your right arm inside of your right knee. Reach around and hold hands outside of your right hip. Three more breaths. Chest up and turn it to the ceiling. You've got it. Chest up. Take a risk of falling backwards to see what more is available to you in the pose. You have one more breath here. Now unwind. Bring your hands back to prayer position. Other side. Left arm down. Just keep sinking into your hips. Hips need time for things to change. Right arm up to the ceiling. Then your right arm behind your back. Left arm, keep it inside of your left knee. Reach around behind you and hold hands. You can use a uh, towel to cover the distance between your hands. You have three more breaths now. Chest up and turn to the ceiling. This is actually going to reach out here. Yeah, a little bit more. Last breath. Pull yourself in your torso, up out of your legs as much as you can. Then unwind, hands to prayer position. Put your hands on the ground. Lift your hips up into the air. I could have said crow pose. <sighs> then just shift your weight from side to side. Put your feet together, open your knees wide. Hands on the floor about a foot in front of your feet. Spread them wide for handstand hands. Here's your position. Hips high in the air. A lot of weight on your fingertips. Shoulders over top of your wrists. Pull your belly in and make your back feel round so your upper back is spreading wide and open. So these are little just baby hops. Just a little hop. Barely touch your toes. A little hop. Lots of control. So not donkey kicks or flailing. Tiny little hops. Take 20 of them. You can count. Or you can just go upside down and hold it for 20 counts. You have those two choices. Just controlled baby hops, knees wide and feet pressing together. Good job. This is a good job. Yep, you've got it. This is good. Keep your knees wide. You're doing really well. Jump with the goal of hovering over top of your hands. Feet together, knees wide, not straight legs in the air. Feet together, knees wide, together. There. Hold that. It's so much easier. Keep your arms straight. <laughs> your arms will need to stay straight the whole time. <laughs> they get a little tired, though. OK, stand at the front of your mat and hang. In front of your mat and hang. Yes, you got it. Did you feel that? You lingered there in the air. Hang, just hang and sway your arms from side to side. It's like they're elephant trunks hanging on the ground. Stay upside down and just let yourself equalize. 
neutralize. Feet together. Come up to standing. Sweep your arms overhead and just stretch up out of your feet. Up and out of your feet. Long body stretch. Eagle pose. Wrap your right arm under your left. Slide your fingertips up and down until you feel the juicy spot in your shoulders and stay at the juicy spot. Then squat and wrap your legs. Pull your belly in, pull your ribs in, and your shoulders back. So if there was a wall behind you, you would be able to land your pelvis, your ribs, and your shoulder blades all on the wall behind you. Just breathe here. Back of your neck long, head long. Step out and sweep your arms overhead. Stretch them up. Left side. Left arm under, left leg over. And imagine wall behind you. Now that we're having a little bit smaller group with summertime, we can maybe work on the wall again. I'll have to remember to do that next time. Shake the pose up. If you've just landed in the spot that you're always in in this pose and you've just gone to your spot to tolerate the few breaths that I'll ask you to take, get deeper in the pose, come a little bit out of the pose, lean more forward, lean more back, change the pose from the way it always feels. Experience it in a new way and step out, arms overhead. Hug your right knee into your chest. Stand tall. Choose to hold the outside of your foot or to stay with your knee, and if it's your foot, extend your leg. Breathe right here, stay tall. The point in holding your leg is to stretch your hamstring. If your hand won't make it to your foot and you want to extend, use a strap. There needs to be some tension on your foot. Open your foot to the right and look and reach to the left. It's a great, if you know, if it's just kind of out of your reach to hold your foot, but you'd really like to go for the extended leg, just use your strap. You are always welcome in here to take a risk of something that you think you can't quite get to and figure it out. Bring your leg forward and switch hands. If it's the strap, then switch your hands on the strap. The whole time you're extending your leg, you can be creating the sense of letting your thigh bone melt back into your pelvis. That alone is an amazing skill to develop. Breathe. Fold right here. Flex. Oh, it's working very hard. She's a, it's a pointer. Yeah, this one is a pointer. Um, <laughs> Come forward, hug your knee into your chest. Marcy's telling on you. Stand up really tall. Take a deep breath in. Now, hands to your hips. Push your heel forward. And while you're doing that, pull your thigh bone back so that you don't lean back to do this. Bend your knee and stand tall. Now, push your heel forward. But more than that, pull your thigh bone back. Bend your knee, stand tall. Good. I'm seeing some change in this. One more time. Thigh back, heel forward. Now, arms overhead. Lift your toes up by sucking your thigh bone back. That's it, and toes up. Nice. Bend your knee, hands to prayer. Airplane pose, square hips. Keep them square. Maybe you won't lift your leg as high, and that's fine. Yes, Anne, you've got it. Now really straighten your lifted leg. Nice, Marcy. Straighten your leg. Both. Both. Push into the ball of your standing foot's big toe. Push into that big toe. Keep pushing into your big toe. You're getting it, Marcy. Keep pushing into your big toe. That's a lot of work. Hands to prayer position, half moon, left fingertips down, right fingertips up, face Africa. Keep your back leg high and keep it active. Consider it like you're um, walking on a tightrope and you know how they always carry a big bar to balance? That's your back leg right now. If it goes loose on you and stops working, this pose is 10,000 times harder. Keep active in your lifted leg. Look up to the ceiling. Megan, open your lifted hip more. Take your foot back to Jane. Leg stays in the air, two hands on the ground, standing splits. Why not? Hug your standing leg with at least your left hand, maybe your left and your right. You just lift it as high as you can. You can hug your chest to your thigh. Bring your right foot to the ground and hang. Come all the way up to standing. Roll up. Sweep your arms over out and stretch. It's like a clean slate, ready for something new. Hug your left knee into your chest. Stand up tall. If you want to strap, there are plenty in the basket. Extend your leg. Your hand towel will probably be plenty for most of you. 
If you extend it without the strap, you'll have to lean back to counter. You won't be able to create that really nice sucking back sensation. Yeah, here you go. That's it, because you're really getting that thigh back idea. A little drop this down, and the thigh rotates in. It'll be challenging. Oh, it's deeper in your hamstring, right? And your calf. One more breath, just to really get a feel for it. <laughs> OK, open your leg toward the left and look to the right. This will be a bit of relief. So two hands around the strap can be the best way to go if what you're looking for is a little more arm length. Your goal is to keep from pressing out. You want to keep it in. OK, so bring your leg forward and switch hands on it. This one should be really the doozy where you find some really tight stuff. Hand on your foot or the strap and look and reach to the back of the room. So right hand on your right knee or your right foot and reach to the back of the room. Yeah, you've got it. Thigh bone back into your pelvis and your waist long on both sides. Yes, that's it. You've got it. Chest turns to the bathroom. Pull your thigh bone back and lift up. There it is. A little tighter. Come forward, hug your knee. Oh, it's shaking. <laughs> hug your knee into your chest. Stand tall, collect yourself, take a deep breath in. Exhale, push your heel forward, thigh back. If you feel yourself leaning back, then the pose isn't quite working. You want to create the sense of this bone moving back as your heel goes forward. Almost like your heel doesn't even move, but your leg comes back. Bend your knee, inhale. Exhale, press forward. Bend your knee, inhale. Jamie, stand tall. Press your heel forward. One more time, bend your knee, inhale. Exhale, press your heel forward. Yes, lift it as high as you can, arms overhead. This sinks right here, this muscle. Lift up tall, lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. Bend your knee, airplane pose. Reach back with your leg. That's it, Harold. Press into the ball of your big toe. Andrea, drop your hip. Yes. A little more your hip can come down, Jane. Yeah, keep lifting your lifted legs, inner thigh, inside ankle. Straighten your back leg, Megan. Nice, Beth. Lift up in your chest. Jamie, stretch it back. Straighten it, straighten it. Okay, half moon, hands of prayer. Right arm down, left arm up. Keep the back leg as your balance pull. Strong and lifted. Stretch your arms in two opposite directions. Soften. Yeah, now squeeze. That's where you'll get the new strength that you lost from locking your knee. Back leg high, your back foot, make it active. Chest up. Come up off of your fingertips. Can you reach so high? You come up off of your fingertips. Reach up, look up, stretch. There it is. Two hands on the ground, keep your leg in the air. Oh, the legs are shaking. Two hands on the ground, at least rest your arms. Back leg high. No rest yet for your standing leg. Hug your standing leg. Be thankful that your standing leg is working so strong. Hug it. Hug two hands. Megan, hug two hands. Wrap your arms around your calf and hug it. Okay, foot to the ground and shake it out. Hang. Oh. Dying, your hips are killing you. OK, I hear you. Put your hands on the ground and step your right leg back and lunge. You can keep your left knee hugging your left arm. Hands on the inside. Hands on the inside. Yeah, that's it. So it's a lizard lunge. Straighten your back leg. Keep your left knee hugging your arms. Can bring your forearms down to the ground. This was a gift, this pose. You said your, your hips were feeling tight from that last stuff we were doing. So now this is a gift. Keep your thigh bones hugging into your midline. See, so wrap them into the midline and, and scissor them. Knee to your arm. Keep hugging it to the side of your body. can bring this foot a little forward. Mm -hmm. Bring that guy in there. Yep. Good. This is good. 
If you'd like, you can bring your back knee down to the ground. For now, keep your knee hugging the side of your body. Walk your left toes out to the side and let your knee drop out to the side. So you'll peel your foot off the floor to the baby toe edge of your foot and let your knee drop out. And stay leaning forward. It's tempting on this to pull back. Stay leaning forward. Yes, yeah, so your foot can stay in the place where it was. And then you peel your foot off and let your knee, I know it seems like surely that's not what she means. But I do. You can keep going forward. You can use your block. Uh, likely it would be your left form that just can't quite make it to the ground. So if you're just not quite there, you wish you were closer, a block under your left form would be helpful. Some people are ready to move on. You can reach around behind your back with your left hand and reach for your back foot's ankle. So left hand around behind, capture your ankle. You may need to crowd forward to make that happen, to curve around to capture your ankle. But once you've got it, then start to ease your body open to the ceiling. You're going to survive this. You will. If your back knee is dying, put something soft under it. This is so good for you. A strap if your arm just doesn't feel long enough. <clears throat> OK, hands on the floor front and center. Just switch sides. Take your left foot back. Bring your right foot forward to the outside of your right hand. Really step it forward. Left foot forward. Summer is the it's yoga season. It's the best time of year to practice yoga. It's hot and it's humid. Your body's juicy. You come into the studio warm already. Your body's ready to do new things. Keep lunging down. So that's wrapping her in. Is that what's happening? OK, good. And squeeze with it. Make it all ha come to the center more. Yep. Forearms, if you want. You can take your forearms to the ground. Keep your back leg up at first. Don't give in quite yet to the rest. Just be patient. It took me years, like more than 10 in yoga to learn, to stop wishing for the next pose. It's not going to be better. You just might as well be in the one you're in. Get curious. Turn your listening on. Get curious in your body what's happening right now. You're not just uncomfortable. There are some spots that are doing some amazing things, but you're not missing it. You're not appreciating it. There are spots that are opening, spots that are getting strong. As you shift around how you're managing your body right now, you're learning some really amazing new things about it. OK, if you want, put your knee on the ground. Forearms down if they're not already. Some of you may not quite be able to get your forearms down. A block would be helpful. Might have to stay on your hands. Right toes turn out toward Africa. <clears throat> Peel your foot off of the floor and let your knee drop to the side. Stay lunged forward. It's tempting to pull back into your back knee, putting your weight back there. Keep it forward into your front foot. Just be patient. Be where you are right now. Appreciate the amazing thing that's happening to your right hip, to the front of your left hip. You can reach around behind your back. Reach for your left ankle with your right hand. It may take some crunching forward, some rounding forward, even some leaning back to get captured there. There you go. And then ease forward, even if it doesn't seem possible. One breath at a time. Ease forward and open. Can you come a little more forward, Beth, and let this spin out? Mm-hmm. Just keep easing your hips forward. Knee over toward Africa, body opening 
toward the bathrooms. As you breathe, keep going there. Forward. Yes. You're going to be okay there. <clears throat> hands to the floor. Downward facing dog with your hands. Keep them together in the center. Downward facing dog. Step your, uh, let's, okay, your left foot outside of your left hand. Keep your back foot in the back. Stay in the lunge. Shift your weight as far forward as you're able to. Shoulders over top of your hands and pull your ribs up into your body as you push your hands down. Hollow out your armpits. Make your belly really strong. So now my weight is very forward in my hands. I'm barely even actually on my back toes. And then just switch. Land as softly as you can. Shoulders over your wrists, even ribs over your armpits. And you'll just jump and switch the foot that's forward with the foot that's back. Each side 10 times. Each side 10 times. How much can you hover in the handstand over your shoulders so your feet are just barely switching? When they land, it's just soft as a feather, and even you hover and linger before your feet land. You'll want to stack as much of your body up as you can. Pull your round belly into your body. Get round like a Halloween cat. If your hips are hanging and sagging low, you have a lot of ground to cover. So stay light and round. Your handstand body shouldn't flatten out, then come back into the handstand. Keep it in the handstand and just shift your feet back. It's tricky. So much strength to build. So you can count to 20, or you can count to 10 on the other side. So the side gets 10 times. And at the very end, you can come to a, let's, uh, let's give you child's pose. We'll give you the puppy dog pose. Hips high in the air, fingertips on the ground, chest to the floor and rest. Physically, what I think in my life and yoga has been the most amazing transition is learning to, yes, be strong in my arms and my legs and my shoulders, but no longer to rely on them to generate movement. Instead, to rely on it from the center of my body out to my limbs. That hopping and switching is a great tool to start teaching you that. Downward facing dog. Stretch your hips up and back. Come to the front of your mat. At the front of your mat, halfway lift and fold down. Come all the way up to standing. Stretch your arms overhead. Reach up and back. Take tree pose. Right leg up to the sole, sole of your right foot, your left inner thigh. Hands to prayer position. Stand up really tall. Unlock your knee. Create an experience where you are connecting yourself into the floor powerfully but with ease. Interlace your fingers, press your palms overhead, connect yourself anchored to the ceiling powerfully but with ease. One foot pushing down, two hands pressing up, powerful but with ease through the center of your body. You can take your eyes up to the ceiling, stretch up and look up and switch sides. Put your right foot down, switch sides. Left foot up to your right inner thigh. Soften your standing knee. It's so easy to go into locking that knee and putting all the weight on your baby toe. Even the weight out through your foot and stretch your toes out like they're the fine tuning of your balance versus everything is in the toes. Interlace your fingers, palms forward, arms overhead. That's it. Soften your standing knee. That's it. Look up and reach out. Nice. Press your elbows, Beth. That's it. Okay, step out of the pose to the front of your mat and squat down. All the way down into a chair. Reach your arms up. Chair pose. Five breaths. Go. Ready? Go. One. Generate breath. I can't count breath. I can't hear. Yes. 
As you sit back, make the thing that keeps you from falling, how strong you reach your arms and your fingers. For the last breath, just pull your belly in and stretch up, then fold to the floor. Halfway lift, make your body long. Chaturanga, you can step back, you can jump back, lower down. Now strong legs, upward facing dog. It's a big back bend. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward and lunge. Warrior one, reach up, big legs, reach up, flat back foot. Turn to warrior two. Big lunge, bend your front knee. Stay down in your lunge, flip your front palm up, reverse the warrior. Big lunge, bend your knee, reach up and back. Straighten your front leg, stretch. Take triangle pose, fingers to the street, hips to the back of the room. Right fingertips on the ground behind your front ankle. Use your block if you need it. Breathe. In fact, today put your flat hand on your block or on the floor. If you need to, make your feet longer apart to achieve that. Big triangle pose, long, long legs if you want. Flat hand on the ground. Pick your right foot up. Press the sole of your foot on this wall to the side. Lift your chest up, breathe. You may need to wiggle walk your foot there. It may not actually come off of the floor. Pick your foot up, get light. Now don't touch your foot to the floor gracefully. High plank, foot in the back. Low plank, you can touch it down if you want. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Step your left foot forward. Warrior one. Reach up. Turn to warrior two. Open your feet long. Lunge down. Flip your front palm up. Reverse the warrior. Nice. Straighten your front leg and stretch up and back. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Triangle pose. Triangle is one of those poses I just can't miss in a practice. It's just the th one of the things that my body's craving the whole way through the practice. If you find it's not possible to get your hand to the floor block, feet further apart. Flat left palm on something stable. So flat left palm, and if I can't quite get it, length is my key. It gives me more freedom to try new things. If your foot feels like it's stuck and too heavy, just walk it out all the way to the side, and maybe it's just to the side, hips stacked one on top of the other. Maybe it doesn't lift, but if it can, lift it up. Walk it to the side, walk it to the side. Keep walking it, keep walking it to the side. Let your left side leg stretch, flex your foot. You've got it. Now pick it up if you can. Suck your thigh bone back into your body. Hips square, bring me that, yes, there it is. Feel how different that feels? Now suck your thigh bone back so much your belly gets round. Drag your foot back. That's it. High plank to low. Nice job. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. It's summertime. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Deep, deep breath in and breathe out. Come to kneeling for camel pose. Kneel down. Keep your toes turned under, hands to your hips. Make your body really, really tall. Knees down, head high. And wrap your shoulders back, chest high now. Camel pose. You can take your hands to your feet if that fits for you. You'll want to keep your knees only hip width distance. Once you start creating a triangle, there's no room then in the back for your tail to descend. So if your cheeks are squeezing, your thighs are wrapping open, there's no room for your tailbone to send in. That has to happen to take a back bend. Lift up out of your knees, up out of your legs with your chest. To come out of the pose, chest even higher, press into Chris's hands to get out of that pose. There you go. That's it. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Stretch back. Kneel down, step your right foot forward 90 degree angles for half camel now. We have been working a lot through the last few months with thigh bones pulling in and hips square. It's critical in this pose. If there's any opening up, the pose just really doesn't work. So hips square. Left hand back to your left heel. If it doesn't make it there, on a block beside your calf muscle. 
feeling really flexible, you could put your hand on your thigh or in the crease of your knee. Then square. You must pull your right thigh back. If it's pressing out of you, it's pose isn't working. Pull it back. Then reach up and back. <clears throat> Keep sucking your right thigh bone back into your body. There you go. Keep pulling that back. That's it, Marcy. Even that micro amount that it wants to go out. Keep it in. The furthest back you're allowed to reach is when your fingers touch the floor behind you. To get out of the pose, chest up, come up and out, hands to the floor, downward dog. Stretch back, then other side. Left leg forward, kneel down, 90 degree angles. Square hips. Pull your left thigh bone back into your body. Pull it back, pull it back, yep, yes. Then reach up and back. You've got it right there. Just keep pulling this guy in. There. Up and back. That's it. Good. Right here, Babs. Oh, Mr. Quad. Good. That's it. Good legs. Just a tiny bit more and stretch this side long. <laughs> Feel how it keeps going. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Come up out of the pose. Hands to the floor, downward dog. Stretch back. So really just drag yourself back into your feet and into your hips. Stretch your shoulders and your arms. Breathe. Come through to sitting. Hmm. Through to sitting. Decisions, decisions. Uh, bend your knees, lean back on your hands, straight arms so your fingertips point to your heels. Let's take um, a reverse tabletop, but with your right ankle on your left knee. Flex your right ankle, though, not like a lazy resting foot, but active. Wrap your shoulders back, then lift up. You want to keep letting your right knee drop to the ground. That's it. Hips as high as they'll go. Keep opening across your collarbones, across your shoulders. Really active foot. Many of you can wrap your left thigh bone in and stand in your whole left foot. Okay, sit down and switch sides. Right foot down, left foot up. Wrap your knee, let your knee drop out. Activate your foot. Shoulders open, then lift your hips up. Yes. Stand in your whole right foot. Just thigh bone rolling. Nice, Marcy. You're getting it. A little bit higher lift. And sit back down, legs straight out in front of you, flex your feet, point your toes up to the ceiling. Now sit up tall so that you're sitting not on just a cushion, not just on squish, but on bones. Locate your bones and sit on top of them instead of behind them. Sit up tall. Many of you all need to just bend your knees a little bit. Then hinge forward so your body stays long. Rather than getting round, right now just long, reach for the outsides of your feet. And many of you will need a strap. You can bend your knees. You can also use a strap. If you've got the strap, take it across the ball of your foot, and then one side wraps around one foot, one side wraps around the other foot. Mm -hmm. Take these around, though. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's good. Good. You keep thinking about your thigh bones going back more than you think about your heels going forward. Thigh bones back. Keep pulling them back into your body and into the world behind you. That will be just a revolutionary body movement change to be able to manage where your thigh bones are going. Okay, come up. 
Next, we're taking a shoulder stand. You can grab a blanket or use your mat, but I'll show you what we're going to do with the blankets. Chris, why don't you just grab an arm load of these and just take them around the room. Yeah, give one to everybody. Let's all use a blanket. What you'll need to do when the blanket comes your way, open it up and then fold it in half. So it's really very smooth. It has to be neat and tidy. So if you are a messy folder, today's not the day for that. Keep it as neat as it can be. And you want a nice thick lip that your mat won't make. This blanket's going to give you the opportunity that a mat won't. So you want thick and stable. Chris will get more. Then you'll recline onto the towel or the blanket until your shoulders are close to the edge and your neck and your head are off of the blanket. It'll be more challenging to get into a shoulder stand this way than it normally is, but it's going to be worth it. So you'll probably need to do a little bit of kicking to get your feet overhead and then shoulders underneath of your back, support your lower back, and from there take shoulder stand. You can have a second mat if you want one. You're allowed to stack that up pretty high so your head is not on the towel, the, the blanket. Your head is hanging off of it. The goal is to give yourself more space for the tightness in your neck and in your shoulders, your upper back. Yep, it'll be a little weird getting into the pose with that platform underneath, but once you're there, you'll discover why we're using it. Yes, having a little time getting over that lump, Andrea. It's a little weird to get up and over it. You have it set up perfectly here. This is good. Let me just move the tails. That'll just make it a tiny bit clearer. Then shoulders back here. A little bit more this way. Head to the wall. Yeah, perfect. Now you'll just have to kick your feet up and overhead. Yep. If you still feel like you can't quite get yourself straight up and down, come on down and ask for a second blanket. Let me give you a second one, Ann, and see if you get a little more out of this. So you might really love it. So you might as well know if you're going to really love something, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. See how much more access you have? It's kind of nice. I'm going to do a little something here for you. I'm going to lift, and you can bring your elbows closer together. Better? Yeah. There you go. There's an action of your arms that are underneath of you right now, squeezing together. And then remember, this is a shoulder stand, not a neck stand. The towel or the blanket is encouraging the curve into your body of your cervical spine. We want to keep that. So if you have any sense of that, you're flattening out your neck, just soften your neck a little more. Good. 10 breaths. 10 calm, easy breaths. Yeah, ideally, you know, ideally this pose is from your shoulders to the crown of your head, pretty straight. You know, the natural curvature of your spine still exists, but then from your shoulders up to your toes, pretty straight. It all just depends on the flexibility in your upper back and your neck. These blankets will give you access to a different place in the pose than you can get on your own. Your action is uplifting versus hanging down and being heavy. When you really feel like enough has been enough, just take your feet back overhead to plow pose. Re-establish the plow pose, hips really high in the air, and then deaf man's pose comes next. That's where you bend your knees next to your ears and reach overhead to hold your feet. The thing about having this platform underneath of your shoulders is the rolling out won't be as smooth as it otherwise would be. So as you roll out, there'll be a clunk as you roll over the platform you've created, Come on out of this plow pose or deaf man's pose. Roll all the way onto your back. All the way onto your back, all the way onto your back. All the way onto your back. Then let's take these blankets and do this. 
We'll make a really gentle fish pose that we'll hold for just a, a few minutes. Sometimes we do it with a block, and that's specific information. The blanket will be a bit more gentle. So I'm thinking the fold we'll take is more making it block-like. Yeah. And you'll want, so I've got my towel folded kind of like a block. Kind of looks like a block. And I'm going to make it so that the top edge of the towel lands at about the tips of my shoulder blades. So there's a pretty gentle, easy incline. My shoulders can rest on the ground, my head, arms wide. Yep, this is about where the top edge of the blanket is landing. We'll come around and help you. You've got it right, that's it. Tush on the ground, you must have butt cheeks on the ground. And then, let me change something about this. You want to make the blanket long instead of wide. How's that feel? And you'll need to do a little maneuvering to center it. We're going to come around and help you if you need another blanket. There are plenty of them. If you've never taken restorative yoga, we have that on Sundays at 11. They use all that stuff over there to do things and hold them for long periods of time. And as you learn how to use the blankets and the sandbags and the bolsters, you're always welcome to grab one if you know there's a pose we do in class that is really enhanced for you by adding props. Allow your body to melt around the blanket that you've put there. The stimulation is meant to be in the area of your upper back. If it's not really happening there, maybe you've crowded the blanket too much into your lower back. As I glance around, blanket is a less specific target than a block. As I glance around, things look pretty good. Harold, you might be able to just scoot down this way and leave the blanket where it is. Might make it better. How's that? Not much different. You can scoot even a little more, I think. Get it more into your shoulder blades. So your work right now is really just breathing. You even have your eye towel nearby. You're welcome to use that. We're starting to ease ourselves toward our main pose, Shavasana. We have a little bit more to go before we get there. But that's the direction we're heading in. So you could put your eye towel on your eyes already if you would like that. This is a pose you can do at home. And it's also a pose that you'll really be clear about when it's over. Some of you are already getting there. The way to come out of the pose is to bring your chin to your chest and roll to your side, not to sit right up. Once you're on your side, you can reach behind and scoot the towel or the blanket or whatever's back there away, then roll onto your flat back. Flat back, and turn your listening on. There's a lot of good stuff to hear right now. Turn your listening on, not to me, but to your body, and hear what's new from having taken the poses you've just done. Don't go to sleep just yet. Hug your knees into your chest. A simple twist. Knees to one side, look to the opposite side. You have the blanket nearby. You can aim your knees to rest on the blanket or put it between your knees as you're turning side to side. Customize every pose you take in a yoga class. There's no point in practicing otherwise. Always customize your practice. How would you customize it? By what you've studied? No, the best teacher is your own body. And when you're actually listening to it, not your brain, your brain will tell you what you want it to look like. Your body will tell you what it should feel like. Go really, though, with this bone, and then right here, and make length. You can switch sides. Yeah. Careful about the thumb. Mm-hmm. You might have felt like you were thinking about strangling her. Now, Shavasana. Set yourself up so that your body can be working at maximum ease. Seems like it's 
opposite or they can't mean the same thing. But the effort is to just holding the shell of maximum ease. Maybe that will make better sense. And stretch your legs long and wide and your arms long and wide. Flip your hands so that your palms face up to the ceiling. Create maximum ease. And while you're creating maximum ease, allow an experience of maximum listening or alertness. Maximum. Maximum, you are here. Maximum, you're experiencing the sounds, the movement of air. Minimum effort. So yoga gives you a nice byproduct of good exercise. This is its main focus. Maximum ease, maximum alertness, minimum effort. That state of being is very purposeful. In the summertime, you have so much more access to information. and information that informs you of the path to maximum ease, maximum alertness, minimum effort. Take a deep, deep breath in, and exhale through your mouth. <clears throat> Hug your knees into your chest. Just a little bit more effort, just a little bit of effort, and roll to your side. Keep your eyes closed. Utilize an inner knowing, an inner seeing, an inner listening, and come up to a sitting position. Create it so that your spine is tall. Create it so that it takes the least amount of effort possible to hold yourself up. Even sitting here, create maximum ease, maximum alertness, minimum effort. Set your intention for the rest of the day.
Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, gather your hands into prayer position. Take one deep breath in. Exhale through your mouth. Bow your chin and say, Namaste. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Maybe I'll see you again on Sunday morning at 9.15. Any questions about teacher training, art of assisting, feel free to ask me any questions about schedule changes, whether it's over art of assisting weekend or a 4th of July, just ask questions. Questions of Chris, you can ask him. He's in teacher training right now. He can answer those, and thank you for assisting today. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye. Do you have any questions about...